Here's one of the latest interviews from Rock and Metal Revival. If you want to hear the whole show, go to rmrshow.com. And that was uh, Vigilante Man from Michael Schenker's Temple of Rock. A new new album going to be released pretty soon. And on the phone, I got none other than Michael Schenker himself. How are you doing, Michael? Hi, I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Red couldn't make it for the interview. He got busy at oh. work. Got busy at okay. work. But uh, we went we went and saw you, um, when was it? Last January. We saw you in Chicago, and it was Red's first time to see you, and he was totally blown away by how good you guys are. So oh. he's kind of upset he couldn't make this interview, but um, we're looking forward to seeing you when you come uh, come to the area again in April, I think. You'll be around Chicago area. Yeah, we are coming now. You know, I tried to get over there with uh, the original with, with, the, with the album lineup, um, you know, like uh, like quite a while ago, uh, last year in 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 spring, mm-hmm. but uh, it it was too early. We, we you know it was just kind of couldn't get it together to make a, a proper arrangements for this lineup. Yeah. But uh, then I tried for autumn, and that didn't work. You know, and and autumn became April, and so now one year later, it finally happened. Well, that's cool though, because you got a new album to promote, also, which is kind of I'm looking really looking forward to hearing this. Um, anything new on the album compared to, like, the last album? Yeah, so Bridge the Gap was the one that Bridge the Gap from Love Drive with Herman and Francis and myself, mm-hmm. and, uh, and, and in, in the meantime, they became the, uh, the, the rhythm section of Rocky Like a Hurricane, and, uh, you know, yeah. and here we're doing an album together for the first time since Love Drive, uh, with, which became Bridge the Gap, and we are... Which in the gap to uh, Temple of Rock Independency, and so now we have an album out that will be out uh, around uh, the twentieth, twenty third, in the states, I think, and mm-hmm. uh, it's called Spirit on a Mission, and it's our second album uh, together, and uh, we have, um, you know, the difference between Bridge the Gap and Bridge the Gap. I had already a little bit of a seven strings introduced, but the idea was to do it gently and uh, and watch um, Wayne Findley, who was developing on the seventh string, you know, for the last 10 years. Mm-hmm. And it's now time to add that instrument, to, you know, and that sound to our um, um, development. And so now we have Spirit on a Mission um, basically developing on a very wide spectrum of sounds, which, you know, the... It's like 50% of the album is very fast and snappy and melodic and hard. And then the other part is uh, heavy and, and a deeper a deeper sounds and more um, on a mid-tempo uh, area. And, and so I asked Wayne to come up with some riffs and then I, com- I make my compositions to what, what Wayne come up, came up with. And then Doogie did his vocals. And so we discovered an additional songwriting team, which was great to have. And so... I think after the third album, um, Temple of Rock will be able to stand on its own feet. We're still using the Michael Schenker uh, platform, um, mm-hmm. you know, to to develop all of this. And so we play, you know, a fair amount of songs from the past, and we play a fair amount of songs of the of the now. And uh, you know, and so we have a you know something for everybody. And and eventually, you know, we will. You know, after three albums of Temple of Rock with this lineup, we will be able to, you know, to to have a pretty good uh, um, show together. That, you know, with Temple of Rock uh, with its own style and and its own identity. Oh, that would be cool. So, um, I heard we well, we heard that your uh the studio where you were recording got robbed, and you ended up they stole guitars and equipment and recordings and. How far did that set you guys back, and did you ever get any of that yeah. stuff back? Yeah, that was a slap in the face, you know, but yeah. what can you do? You, you just have to take it, you have to get up, work twice as hard, and, and the results, you know, it got that much better. Yeah. We just looked, we looked at the, at the at, you know, it was, it was uh, lucky that it was, you know, four of my favorite guitars, meaning favorite guitars, you know, four mm. of the guitars I've been playing on the last tours. And yeah. so, you know, but I guess maybe it was time to change guitars. No, <laughs> and, uh, and the other thing is about the, 
the stolen music, it was just performances and not composition. So that was lucky. And, yeah. uh, you know, and so I look at it as a very intense pre-production. So that means that the final recording was even more intense and therefore, you know, much more effort was put into it and it, and it got that much better. Oh, okay. So I got a question now on uh, your guitars. Now, when I, you know, I play guitar, I got a bunch of, I, I'm a flying V guy too. And now you, ah. your Deans, on some of them I see like at the, where the strings come through the body, you got that metal V thing there, you know, where your strings come through. And sometimes, some of yours have like, looks like a washer or something that's kind of attached or it's like red and yeah. gray. What is that? Yeah, it's just a tool. It's my howler. Uh -huh. You know, the howler is basically a device and a technique. It's more of a technique than a tool, but um, it makes an unusual new inventive sound. Oh. And you can hear, yeah, and I played it on on the first Temple of Rock album um, before Francis was there, on the, on, the, on the one where Michael Foss was singing, that was, I think, released 2011 or so, or 12, and... Uh, and and I was uh, playing that 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 device and the technique on on a song called Mistrustophobia, oh, yeah. and then I made the and then I made the Bridge the Gap record with Herman and Francis. And then uh, in Japan, it was pointed out what happened to the howler. I said, Oh, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> and so I made an effort on still on a mission to write a song with the howler, and it worked out extremely well. It's a really spooky song. And and so that device you're talking about, that that piece of whatever you call it, yeah, look, is look. the howler. Okay. It's the howler, and that and that makes that sound. Oh, okay. Yeah, I had no idea. I was like, what? What is that? I've never yeah, seen I that play, on a guitar. I play it. Yeah, you will you will hear it on a song called. Um, it's, it's, um, uh, what was the song? It's called something of the night. Okay. On the new spirit on the mission album. Okay. Cool. Now, a lot of artists take take sometimes years between releasing albums. You've been pretty consistent these last, like, 8, 10 years of putting something out pretty much every year. How do you stay so creative and, like, to be able to do that? Well, the, actually, the last album was uh, done two years ago, and so between the, the, the finish of last time, of the last record, Pitch the Gap, not the release date, but when we finished the oh, last record, okay. I had two, yeah, I had two okay. years to, to uh, so the, the album was actually lying around seven, uh, seven months, uh, Pitch the Gap, before, you know, we, we uh, released it, and so we had the chance to reopen it and, and make some, uh, you know, improvements on it. That was the, the disadvantage, that was the, the advantage of that album. Mm -hmm. And so Spirit on the Mission actually, um, um, release date is two years after Bridge of the Gap, Bridge the Gap, uh, finished, uh, recording. And uh, anyway, I mean, I basically, I stopped listening to music when I was 17 and a half years old, and I stopped copying music since I was 17 and a half years old, and instinctively I knew that's what I had to do in order to do what I wanted to do, which was, you know, the focus was on pure self-expression, which means you don't write music uh, uh, following a trend. You just write what, what you love writing. I mean, whatever you feel the way it should sound and be, you just, that's what you do, regardless mm -hmm. of, of what is out there. And that means you automatically, by doing so, you create your own... Um, you, you create your own style, you know, yeah. if you keep doing it year after year after year. And I've been doing it for 43 years, um, you know, not listening mm -hmm. to music and not copying. And so basically I'm writing from within. So my preference is to, to release new colors and, uh, that only can be seen and, and, and yeah, when a person decides to write from within. So anybody can do it, but not everybody does it. Mm -hmm. And so the advantage of uh, doing that is you're tapping into a more infinite, uh, um, infinite uh, spring of creativity, and the other one is limited and puts you under pressure, which is following a trend. Mm -hmm. And of course, following a trend, you get an instant payoff, <laughs> yeah. an instant gratification of you know of all the things that come with a trend. And uh, and if you do, if you write from within. You just, um, you know, you don't really expect anything other than, you know, that you 
feel very fulfilled about um, a, a pure self-expression. Mm -hmm. That's what I like about what I really like about you is I can I can pretty much guarantee any album I put on with Michael Shanker on it is not going to have a disco song on it. And it's not going <laughs> to, you know? It might be, it might be a, a, a pure self-expression disco. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Now, Doogie, I've never seen, never, you know, I hadn't really heard of Doogie White before um, your last album. And then seeing him live, he's really, really good. Where where do you guys meet up and decide to to hook up and start doing this? Well, Doogie and I, I think, I think since 2010 or 2009, we kind of crossed paths quite uh, often. Uh, we ended up maybe even playing on stage together with, what, you know, him singing one song or bottom or something. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, it's like this. I think, uh, you know, like uh, there's more than meets the eye. And I think it was uh, slowly in the making, you know, in a step-by-step -step fashion. And yeah. uh, I think when... Uh, Doogie was already singing of my, on my very, very first Temple of Rock album, where Michael Foss was the main singer, and Doogie was singing Before the Devil Knows You're Dead. Okay. And so that song I especially wrote for his, lyric, for his vocals in mind, and uh, it, it came out extremely creative and powerful, and it suggested that this would definitely be something for the future for us. And then when it came you know, to the point of after I toured, that album and Michael Foss wasn't available and I had Robin McCauley help me out in America and Michael Foss was available in Japan and then eventually Doogie was available for Europe and that was also the time when Pete Way got sick and Francis Buchholz joined mm -hmm. and that was the click of this formation that's when we um, when I felt that we had a really good chemistry going and that's when I suggested that's when I quickly decided to make a DVD before something happened. Yeah. <laughs> and so to at least have a, a memory. And then, but it got stronger and it got better and it got more exciting and the audience loved it and we loved it to the point when I suggested to make a record together, which became Bridge the Gap. And, and, and then, you know, and then of course we did another world tour and, uh, you know, it, it, we, we were feeling and I already had a new, co an additional concept on what I wanted to do with the next album. And so we did spirit on the mission, and I'm realizing now that we are getting very, very, very close to our own identity, like spirit, like a temple of rock, creating its own style, mm -hmm. and and it's getting very close to being ready to 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 be a, damp, a, a temple of rock band, you know, with a with a with already a path of uh, original songs that will be standing out there by by themselves. Oh, cool. Cool. So you're going to be doing uh, the Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp coming up at the end of the month. Uh, are you looking forward to that? Have you ever done one before? Yeah. Well, I have been approached many times, and I actually kind of refused. Uh, the same with the cruise. You know, I yeah. I didn't really want to do it. It's just some, I don't know. It's like uh, something that uh, what I have in mind is you know be be on stage and tour, mm -hmm. but. Uh, but, you know, these are new things that kind of are a bit unusual for me to understand if I should do it or not. And yeah. uh, But somehow I got talked into it. And so, <laughs> you know, I, I didn't want to do the cruise either, but it's definitely a, a, a one-time must experience, you know. Yeah. It, it's a very unique, it's very unusual, and it's uh, for one, you know, at least once, you know, to understand. It's pretty, you know, out there. And... Uh, and so I, I guess the, the boot, the, 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 you know, the camp, the fantasy camp thing, I guess maybe it's the same thing. It's probably, I, I, you know, I, I have no real I, idea on what it is like, but, you know, hopefully it's going to be a one time must experience. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's, I was, man, if it wasn't so expensive, I was planning on going to that, but oh well. <laughs> So, um, what do you like and dislike about the technology, the digital digital age of recording music and distributing music? You know, are there good well, things and or, or is it all or more bad things than good things? I mean, no, it's you know, it's just it's 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 uh, evolution. You know, it's like things happen. If you think about it, you know, hundred years ago. There wasn't even a, or oh, maybe a little bit over a hundred years, there was no motorbikes and cars and, and rockets. And, yeah. 
you know, and and it's all there, but you adapt to it, you know, but it's still, you still have to let the spirit do the work, you know, the spirit does the real work. The, I mean, you can do so much with computers, you can push button and it does it all for you, but that uh, that availability everybody has, and the outcome of it will be that everything is going to sound the same. Mm-hmm. So at the end of the day, regardless of how much help you have out there, of course, certain things, especially for the for the hard handmade rock and roller, mm-hmm. you know, where it used to be very, very hard to do something. I used to spend, you know, 70% tuning and 30% playing with UFO because, yeah. we, you know, it was just because of technology. Today, you know, you just kind of, the guitars tune itself, you know. Mm-hmm. And so yeah, that, that kind of stuff makes it easier. And But at the same time, you know, you... You had to work really hard in the handmade rock uh, stages. Uh, it was uh, you really had to be able to do your your stuff well on the guitar. Yeah. But even though you get a lot of help from technology, it still doesn't replace the spirit, you know. And yeah. and uh, especially if you write from within, if you if you write, uh, um, you know, uh, um, uh, following trends. Okay, well, you do what the trend does, which is probably going to be more of the same. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, I think the more people are able to do something without effort that is easier to put together, the more it becomes important to do something from within. Because at the end, there is nothing original left unless you write from within. So maybe all of this will lead us back to spirit. Yeah. Well, you've expanded your uh, guitars as far as the design, the black and white. You had the <clears throat> one that was like a, a kaleidoscope or the stained glass, the really colorful one and stuff. You got any new designs you're working on or anything? Yeah, like that? Well, I, the, the latest, well, those got stolen anyway. Oh. And so the latest designs are uh, is a black and red guitar that I just played on the cruise, which sounded really good. Mm. And... Uh, and so I have a hollow body uh, guitar, which I uh, use for a special idea that I have. And then I have, uh, you know, the retro, the yin and yang, mm-hmm. and the power channel guitar. And so that's what my touring guitars are at the moment. Probably I won't take the hollow body to America, yeah. but uh, because we play a special set where I don't need that guitar yet. But uh, in the future, when I come back, there is a particular the Savior machine on this album where I'm using you know, the hollow body guitar for a special kind of sound. And so Mm -hmm. that will be available or, um, you know, I will be using that one soon in America when I come back next time. But those are the guitars at the moment. Okay. Well, it's going to be hard. So they have no clue where, who got those guitars or what they're, I mean, because those are going to be hard for anybody to get rid of because those are pretty much, you know, they're yours. yeah, it depends on who stole them. If somebody who knows stole them or somebody who doesn't know what they stole. Yeah. <laughs> so we don't know. If it's somebody who knows, I guess in in either way, they, what can be the benefit? Yeah. It's going to be hard for them. Yeah, they can't sell them because if they do, they're going to know they're stolen. They're going to know who they belong yeah, to. Yeah, and if they and if they paint them, then then it, it could be anybody's guitar. So yeah, you know, if it was just somebody who wanted a few dollars and it doesn't matter what they steal you know then then i guess they can but then they don't know if it is something known and they won't even get the idea to paint it mm-hmm. so in, in theory one way or another they should be caught very very easily yeah well i hope they do get caught because that that's crap yeah. man but um that's like somebody stealing your kids man yeah <laughs> <laughs> So, I think I'm getting another phone call in. Okay, well, I'll, I'll cut this short, and um, we're going to head out of here with uh, Live and Let Live off the new album. And, Michael, it was an honor to talk to you again, and we're looking forward to seeing you in another month or so. Thank you so much. All right. Well, you take care. Keep on rocking. To catch the whole show of Rock and Metal Revival, all you have to do is check it out on these affiliates. Mega Rock Radio is on Saturdays from 11 a.m. Eastern Time. On Rock 101, KLOL, on Saturdays, 11 p.m. Eastern. 
on Z Rock 106.9 KKZR, Sundays at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, and on Uncontrolled Noise, Tuesdays at 1 a.m., Thursdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, and on Saturday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern on uncontrollednoise.com. And make sure that you leave them a message and tell them that you found Rock and Metal Revival on their stations. Enjoy this edition of Rock and Metal Revival. <laughs> 